Hey YouTube, today we're gonna to be talking about Kotlin scope functions, and I'm gonna show you all the different options there are, and then also when you might use one over the other so that you can use some of these functional style scope functions and get a pipeline of transformations that your data kind of flows through and get some really cool behavior. So let's jump into it and I'll show you some scope functions. So Kotlin provides several functions that you can use to execute code inside the context of an object. And the four that I'm gonna walk through today are let, also, apply, and run. There's also another one with that I haven't used a whole lot, so we'll just skip that one for this video. Generally, the benefits are to increase readability in your code and achieve what I talked about before of having a pipeline of transformations that your data flows through from start to finish and then you end up with the result. If you're doing the pipeline, then you usually don't need the extra temporary variables that you have a lot of times in code. And so you can eliminate those and just execute the code on your context object. Basically, all these functions do the exact same thing where you're taking something like a list or an object, and then you're applying functions or applying operations on it. And so the two things to note that are different are what gets passed into that context or that scope function, which is either a it, which is your lambda argument, or a lambda receiver, which is your this. And then the second of those that you need to be careful of is what is returned. Either it's gonna be the output of that lambda, or it's gonna be the same context object or the thing that you're operating on. Let's start with the first one here. So in this first function, we have the let scope function, and it uses it, which is your lambda argument, and it's gonna return a lambda result. And so whatever gets output out of the let function here at the bottom, if I change this to false instead of this check here, then it's always gonna return false. Now I have two examples here. The first one, we're looping over a list and we're filtering on anything that is greater than two. So we're gonna end up with a three. This is kind of unnecessary, but essentially let is gonna allow you to check for null. So that's most of the time where you'll see let used is I wanna make sure that there's something here that I can print out so I don't have an explosion and things blow up in my app. But you can use either let like this, or sometimes if you're not sure whether a string is there, you can do a question mark here and that will actually allow you to check whether the thing is available or not. For this example on the bottom, I'm actually showing where you might do that same thing and you might have the question mark here. If it's not available, you could also do Elvis operator and assign it so that you have this default value or some other error handling or something that can catch it later so that you can proceed in your pipeline of operations and not have anything blow up on you. The second function we're gonna talk about here is apply. And this a lot of times is used in your builders. And this one uses this, which is your context object. And then it's also gonna return the same context object. And because of that, you can apply operations to an object or a list or something like that. A lot of times it's gonna be an object like this user. So if we have a user that's logged in and we need to make some updates or add additional fields after the user's created, then we can do that using an apply. And a lot of times you have this kind of builder operation where you can assign uh, different things to it. Note that I don't have to say this dot, or you know, if I was in the let operation, if I did it, then I would have to do it dot all of these things. But because I am in apply, I don't have to do that because I already have access to the context object. And you can see that on all of these, you have a little hint if you're using IntelliJ at the very end. So you can see that the this is on apply. And then for our let, you can see you have it at the top here, which is a list of integers, or you can actually provide your own variable so that if you have nested it blocks, then you don't have conflicts on understanding which it you're actually using. At this point in the video, you can actually apply your awesome learning and hit that like and subscribe button. So let's jump into the next function. The next function we're gonna talk about here is also, it uses the it, which is the Lambda argument, and then returns your context object. I'll post a link in the bottom here about Kotlin documentation, which has a nice chart of comparing these different 
values and when you have a context object that's returned versus what the input is into the scope function. So I'll put that at the link in the bottom. Also is gonna be used whenever you're printing things like a side effect or logging or writing to a database. A lot of times whenever you are in your code base and you need to do some debugging, then you can bail out and say also, and that way you can see the value as it's going through, but not disrupt the actual logic that is being run. You know, you could say if I wanted to not have these in here, I just get rid of them and then I'm back to my normal logic. Typically, you wanna have log statements in your code so you understand what happens in production if things go sideways. Also is a very nice way to handle that. And what this does is it continues to pass the values in instead of the output, which is what you would see in the let. The last function we'll talk about here is run, and it uses the this, which is your context object, and then it returns a Lambda result. So whatever happens at the end of the Lambda is what is gonna be returned. Now this one, I don't use quite as much, uh, but I have seen it used with coroutines or longer running calculations. The cool thing with this is it can be run either as an extension function or as a non-extension function. And so if you wanted to use it as an extension function, that's this example here where you have a new user being initialized and we're actually flipping the last name and first name. Now run is usually used whenever you are doing some kind of calculation and you want to return the value. With apply, you're just doing the return value, but if you need to do some other calculation within that, then run might be your friend here. For our other example, we can actually run this you know, expensive operation. Let's say this is actually reaching out to another system, a database or something like that. Now you would want to use coroutines, but with run, then you can say like, okay, let's save this value, run it and actually use it later on. That's all the functions except for with, which I wouldn't worry about for now, but is another scope function that you could dig into. The other thing to note is you should avoid overusing these scope functions because it can actually not turn into good readable code. So don't overdo it use them where it makes sense, and make your code a little bit more readable. If you like videos like this, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.